to spend this next segment talking about the 2016 real estate year in review. 2016? 2016, I know, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's amazing. And, and I hope you're enjoying your Christmas. If you're listening to us, um, you know, God bless you for spending your Christmas. <laughs> We're going to sing before the end of the yeah, show. We <laughs> wish you a Merry Christmas. No, but, but really seriously, I, I, was, uh, I was surprised that we actually still did a, a Christmas Day show because... I think right now there's four people listening. You know, every other company's going to throw a rerun on there, but not us. I know we did it original, us, right, yeah. right, right. We did, we did it for real. You know, we didn't skip out. You know, we we, we recorded a real show. You know, and, and I, mean, I mean, we're here on Friday. Yeah, I know, but, but it's, still, it's, it's not. But it's, it's close. It's, it's the twenty third. Yeah. Yeah. It's I closed today. Yeah, we had to like break the door down to get in here. Like, <laughs> no one's here. They're all off playing Papalito already. You know, <laughs> lots of eggnog being. There. That's it exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, real estate two thousand sixteen real estate review. Home inventory, obviously, um, very little home inventory, at least in Tampa Bay. Uh, we've been hovering around three months of inventory, and uh, th that's been the biggest, I think, sl the biggest thing, the biggest hindrance mm -hmm. to the Tampa real estate market recovery has been inventory. Well, Am I down inventory? Yeah, and like we said before, I mean, there, there's many segments of the country where down payment is a bigger hindrance, or credit score, or student loans, or this or that. In Tampa Bay, that those have all been debunked. I mean, we have zero percent down. We have down payment yeah. assistance grants. And we, I mean, we have very low down payment even on jumbo loans. Uh, home inventory is the number one thing where. And we, we're seeing it. I mean, we're getting buyers frustrated and agents frustrated because bidding wars happen, and they feel like, oh, well, we didn't, you know, we we didn't know that it, you know we had thirteen offers on this house uh, uh, like a few days ago, and we sent out an email to everybody that showed it. And, you know, while the bidding war is ensuing, somebody shows up on a Saturday with a bunch of questions. It's like, we got 14 offers on the house. We're picking an offer on Monday. Yeah. The, the seller doesn't even respond to the questions. Cause the, you know. And then the, the buyer and the agent are sending us scathing emails of someone to answer their question. Maybe they would have had the best offers. Like, dude, look, you probably could have made your offer and then figure out you had an inspection period, you know. But it's that's the market, you know. It's, right. it's just, it's, it is what it is. So, um, foreclosures. Uh, very little foreclosures this year. Yeah, a lot less. Than uh, you know, so so that was passed. another thing. A, a decline in listing inventory was coupled with a foreclosure drop. So some of that listing inventory that we had in prior years was was foreclosures. You know, and now there's there's just, it's few and far between. I mean, a couple of years ago, you I mean, it was basically two out of three were probably yeah. foreclosures or short sales. Oh yeah, it was, it, was, it was it was I mean, there were teams locally and throughout Florida that built their whole business around foreclosures, and now they're just. You know, the, the, the numbers are not even close to what they were. I mean, they're really struggling. Um, so the low down on mortgages, this is kind of funny because we, we contributed to this. But, uh, you know, the, the a lot of prediction that interest rates were, or mortgage rate confusion. A, a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, people expecting rates to rise, expecting rates to rise. All last year we kept saying rates are going to rise. They never did because economically and mathematically it was obvious that they should. There was something else going on in Washington that kept them from, from rising. But nonetheless, now they're rising. I mean, every economist, every prognosticator, every mortgage expert, as this article touts, I mean, we said all that they were in rise. We, we all believed it, yeah. and uh, never and happened. It, it just, it just didn't happen. It's happening now. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. happening now. So, <laughs> um, the low down on mortgages again. I think um, more uh, people had a, a misunderstanding about how much down payment money was needed for a mortgage, and I think all the mortgage companies and the real estate market did a better a job of promoting and educating consumers about the different programs that are out there that are lower down payment or no down payment options. Lower down payment, no down payment, there's uh, you know lower credit score options. A lot of times, if you get turned down by one bank, you should make a call to another bank. No uh, question. Lot, we see that happen a lot. Uh, whether it be uh, the amount of down payment required, whether it be your credit score, there's a lot of things that other investors have at, at their yep. fingertips. And there's even private there's even private money out there now where you know you have investors that you know may not give you bank rates, but 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 you know maybe a couple percentage points above that because there's enough equity in the home or they're confident enough about the real estate market. So uh, condos in play again. Um, you know. It, more more opportunities with condos with some of the loosening of guidelines through FHA, um, you know fees, HOA rules, a lot of different things related to condos. I think you know got the ball back rolling again on condos, and I think that that trend will continue this year too. A perfect example tied into the, to the last point. I mean, there's a lot of big banks that say you have to put down 20, 25 percent for a condo. Absolutely not true. You can do it with a you know three or five percent down payment, just like anything else. Yep. Property insurance. So, uh, property insurance has been a thorn in the side for uh, a lot of Florida homeowners. 
Uh, but this year it wasn't just about hurricanes, it was plumbing. So, um, you know, it looks like, um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of causes from uh, broken pipes that, that, had, that have caused some changes in the insurance world in terms of changes in policy as well as changes in, in uh, costs. Uh, related to plumbing and, and the, in the insurance world it was more of a year of uh, you know problems with with plumbing and toilets than it was with, with hurricanes um, what you don't want to comment on that one? <laughs> well I mean insurance isn't really my thing but, yeah, uh, but you know I'm not gonna no. talk about plumbing on yeah, Christmas I hear you. the Great Wall of China uh, by the fall of 2016 the Chinese spent more money outside their home country than any other nation bumping the US from the top position uh, and for the fourth year in a row, NAR's annual survey found that the dollar value of Chinese real estate purchases exceeded all other countries. It was more than triple Canadian purchases. Normally, Canada runs things when it comes to this, but China has uh, passed them up. And uh, the, for Canadians to buy a home, uh, Florida trend reversed a bit because the exchange rate, you know, it, it went back in the other direction. And, uh, you know, I looked at a chart about, you know, Chinese investment in real estate and Tampa Bay specifically, you know, is, and I talked about this last week on the show, the Chinese just don't invest a whole lot here. I think it's maybe the fifth or sixth, um, you know, country in terms of ranking, in terms of where outside money comes from. So most of China is still headed out west, a lot of California, a big chunk of California, a lot of New York. And a lot of Miami still, but but they haven't quite you know found Tampa yet. So we're we're hoping you know we're working on some things in 2017, hopefully to change that. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, China has has been a big thing. Canada was still near the top, and and um, you know a lot of Canadians Canadians just love Florida. Uh, hacking scams and lies, you know more Craigslist scams, more people faking realtors, more people using homes as fake property you know properties for rent and scamming people. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's been wire chains for scams, there's been all kinds yeah. of scams going around the real estate world that's caused everyone to be you know, on, on the you know, defensive, be more alert when it comes to different things. Well, this was basically the year that every title company decided they're not going to accept uh, cashier's checks anymore. So it's all, all wires from this point forward yep. just to try to... Because people can fake the, fake the wire. Uh, drones go legit. In June, the FAA finalized rules for the business use of drone. Before then, um, realtors who use drones um, you know, basically had to work in the gray area, uh, but how under the new FAA rules, drone use went from almost impossible to merely difficult. Um, requires operators to have a remote pilot certificate, follow rules on maximum height, stick to flight paths without people below it more. Fortunately, both of our we have two uh, in-house employees that photograph most of our properties, and both got their drone pilot licenses. Yeah. Uh, which and is and that cool. is that is an actual pilot license. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's the same. You know, thing I, 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 talk, I talked about this in our team meeting, and, and Jackson and Jane, who are our two photographers, are both incredible. And they they they're, they're employees of our company. A lot of companies use outside third-party photographers, and we don't do a lot of that. The main reason we don't is because um, I, I feel like. You know, and again, a lot of the outside companies, you're kind of at their schedule. Uh, you can't control their schedule for reshoots, their editing. They have their own policies. They have their own procedures. And, and um, you know, I just didn't agree with a lot of that. And, and especially a property you need to get on the market or they picked angles that I didn't like. Or, oh, we didn't get an ang a photo of that angle that shows the garage. Well, you know, it's a six-car garage. You think it's maybe important, you know, for this luxury property? So we had a lot of challenges with outside photographers, so we decided to bring it in-house. And so Jackson and Jane, uh, who, were, who were both incredible, uh, got their drone pilot license. And um, I... When, when the when the whole policy first came out to get it, um, I've flown our drones, you know, flown them around our neighborhood and different things. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna get mine too. And I went online to take the sample test. <laughs> and the sample test, I'm not it's gonna no lie. Joke. Oh no, I looked at it for ten minutes and I was like, there's no way in hell I'm passing this. I'm not taking. There's no way I'm getting this license. <laughs> so we we paid and put Jane and Jackson to the class. And I told Angel, I was like, we're gonna, not only are we gonna have to pay to put them in the class, but we're gonna have to pay to put them in like exam prep and they're going to yeah. take that, that like it's this is going to be a process you know and so I, I gave them a lot of credit and may, maybe I didn't give them a lot of credit um, because I really doubted that they were going to pass the exam <laughs> and they both passed it the first time they both I mean they passed it like you know well like easy the first time because it was there was a lot of math there was there was uh, you're looking at it is the grass control oh it is it's <laughs> like the la latitude and longitude and this and that and I'm like you got to be kidding me there's no way I'm gonna pass this. And they both took the class and passed it, so I was I was thoroughly impressed. So we have two uh, licensed people. There are still a lot of people um, that that are operating them without the licensing. So, um, but but nonetheless, the aerial photography is a game changer for us. You know, at our party this past weekend, um, we had customers going in and giving uh, you know that were 
stepping up to a video booth and talking about their experience working with us. And I heard multiple times when we were going through those videos that the people were super happy with the aerial and the drone photos because they felt like that showed their it property a different light. You know, when you look at like waterfront properties and unique properties and big lots, and I mean, again, you've got the stand, a lot of standard type homes that it doesn't make a lot of sense for. Uh, it, but but the there's no question that that for the right properties it makes a big difference in terms of the marketability. So uh, and then of course the Florida Realtors celebrates the 100th anniversary. The state association hit a milestone in 2016. Florida uh, Realtors have now officially been helping Florida buyer sellers for 100 years. So that's pretty cool. And then looking ahead at 2017, uh, in December the Florida Supreme Court changed the bank's foreclosure timelines, moved it could open up more inventory for resale and help ease Florida's too tight inventory listing. So that could impact the, fl the foreclosure and short sale market. Uh, I think that, again, more inventory, the market will take it. You know? yeah, the, the market will, can, can use a lot more inventory. Right now. Uh, taxes, uh, Congress and, and the new administration, I think there's no question that there's going to be some tax deductions, change in impact housing, as well as income taxes. They've already re refused to extend tax forgiveness for homeowners who go through a short sale or foreclosure. Um, and uh, will they consider changes to the home mortgage tax deduction? Who knows, but certainly keep an eye on it. And then, uh, and, and I think that taxes in general have an impact on investment, corporate investment in real estate. You know, if they scale back the, um, the, the way that, um, you know, Trump's tax policies and his, his um, you know, plans are, if they scale back the income tax on corporations, as well as scale forward their ability to immediately deduct depreciation, it could it could lead to a huge increase in corporations investing in real estate. It frees up income, but it also frees up the tax benefit. So we'll see if that if that ends up happening. And then Fannie and Freddie, um, you know, they're secondary lenders, but any change in the way that they buy loans could make it harder or easier for buyers to qualify. So it'll be interesting to see what Fannie and Freddie do in 2017. It's it's been a, it's been a big year. Yep, it's been, been an amazing year. year. Yeah,